Hello everybody, Anacon here with a Bacchus guide for you Twitchies. So we've got here our standard starting build guys, watchers, and do boots one. And of course we've got our potion set out, saving that 50 gold because normally in a competitive game I would be warding somewhere in the yonder regions of the map. So I don't want to have an extra potion in lane for practice. And of course our first active is Shell. Shell is just by far the most effective teamfight active. Uh, basically throughout the entire game, but especially in the early portions of the game, it's insane how much those protections will help you more than any other active. So, we've got Bacchus, we've got our flop first, guys. Uh, Bacchus is a okay laning phaser, but an amazing team fighter and initiator, plus he's one of the tankiest, probably the second tankiest god uh, in the game outside of maybe Fafnir, just because of how much gold he gets and how many items he can get so fast, so... It seems we're all going to be starting the red buff here. We have a Loki ADC, which is definitely different. Uh, so he's not going to be soloing those back camps. It seems that he won't be able to clear it in time. So we're just going to do red to boars. This is definitely not preferred. Um, if you're doing this normally, you're going to be getting the back camps with you. Uh, it's going to give you a lot more XP. And basically, you're going to be clearing it at the same pace that we just cleared. Uh, without clearing the back camps. We're against an Artemis Fafnir. We should be okay in this laning phase. Uh, Loki Bacchus actually pairs very well together because you can do that. Uh, you group up the wave with the Loki decoy and then you just smash the crap out of it. And he's going to be able to harass Artemis to no end basically. This could actually be a really good lane for us even though our team is already dying and feeding. No problem. So our level order on Bacchus is to get the flop first then you need to get the burp. Helps group up the wave as well. At level 3 you have an option basically to either get... You can either get your chug or you can get another point into your flop. I prefer the flop here. Uh, help me save a little bit more mana. Uh, until I get level 4. You do lose a little bit of aggression because you won't have the stun on chug. But at the same time you do get the bonus damage going into your flop. At one point, I need to just hit this trap so it's not here anymore. This Loki uh, Bacchus combination is very, very good. It's also very, very annoying. So, you know, it gives you something to try if you want to go for something that's really annoying. Once we get our chug, we're going to be working on keeping ourselves smashed. Um, the biggest tip for when you're drinking is to make sure that you don't drink too often. A lot of people basically just spam their drink whenever it comes up. Hey, I finally got it. That is not what you want to do. You do not want to just spam your drink. That's going to be a waste of your mana. You do not want to do that. I would help the Loki, but I've got to go ahead and make sure the archers aren't going to be shooting his butt off. You want to make sure that you're just drinking as much as you need to, which is going to be basically... Whoop, it's going to be when you get down to that smash line. So basically the line I'm at right now, that's when you keep drinking. That'll give you up to about 90 plus percent, around 95 percent, give or take. And that's going to be plenty for you to do everything you need to. No reason to really be drinking above that. We can go really hard in this Artemis. He does have Thunder on Loki. That is her beads. And that'll be just fine for us. So right around, you can wait for it. Hey, look, 65 percent, give or take, drink up to 97 percent. That way I'm not wasting any mana. Artemis is quite low. If this Loki could hit 5, we could instant give her, but he's not going to be able to hit 5 in time. Laning phase so far, so good. Uh, Bacchus, like I said, has a very average laning phase. So, you're not always going to win it. You're not always going to lose it. He's about 50-50. It depends a lot on the ADCs. Shelled. That should keep him alive through the tower shot. It did. I'm going to go ahead and use my drunk on this guy. Oh, shoot. We had a Thanos ult come right down on us, popping a health potion, trying to live. I'm going to go right back in on him, though. Trying to knock him the Fafnir. Got him both. We should be able to kill that Fafnir easy. And we are going to get the return kill on the Fafnir. But that actually ended up working out pretty well for us. I got a double kill, which, of course, I'm always down for. Go ahead and use my drink again and start to back up. So we're going to start working into our build. I'm going to get myself Adventurer's Blade as well as a couple wards. Sell that health potion, get a mana potion. 
The one notable exception to using your chug is whenever you back to base, use your chug, period. If you're respawning, use your chug. If you're back into base, use your chug. There's no reason not to. Get yourself at 100% when you're leaving the base. Because you're going to get your mana back by walking out of the fountain anyway. Anyway, so. Make sure to grab some wards. You always want to grab wards on your backs when you can. Uh, before, like, 8 minutes, you're pretty much just looking for mass amounts of vision. He missed that. That's awkward. With your regular wards. And then after that about 8 minute mark, give or take, you want to start switching over into sentry wards. Plus a regular ward if you can afford it. The most important part, just making sure you get that sentry ward out. Because that's when you really need to start using your counter vision effectively. Flopping on the Thanatos, he should be able to pick him up as well. Arise, use the ulti, throw on the sun under tower. This guy should be easily dead. Holy cow. Arise actually died there. He's just so far behind from the early game. It's incredible. He's having a very, very hard time this game. We can fight middle lane. We can go for this Anubis. Oh, he has a speed buff. Why does Anubis have a speed buff? No, don't do it. Oh my god, he's late. We can... Oh god, he has Aegis. Okay. This Anubis has Aegis and a speed buff. Why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. I don't deserve this. Run! Just dip, 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 dip. Fafnir actually used a lot there. I might be able to turn back on him. Oh no, the creeps! He has no mana. Anubis has no mana. They should be able to get the kill there. I CC'd him long enough for us to finish that off. Fantastic. I'm not going to finish the wing blade here. That's not important. You're going to start working into Urchin. I didn't get to play any of my wards because basically I just fought the entire time I was out. That's okay. I'm going to start working into Hide of the Urchin now. Hide of the Urchin is going to be your core item in this build. It's very, very important. Your goal is to get it on in between the 10 to 12 minute mark. If you build it by the 10 to 12 minute mark, that's fantastic. Uh, you're gonna have great tankiness going into your team fight stage of the game, which is basically right around when you start finishing Urchin, you're gonna start having uh, those 3v3 skirmishes. My boy Ryzen needs to get himself some more XP. Give me a sentry for the gold. We don't have a hog or anything, so we can't burn it super early, but a Loki Mercury can do it really well. Stay here looking for a pickoff. Actually, the Anubis is coming in. If you watch watching, we can buy this. Oh. They're here in the mid lane, looking at the mid lane. My goodness. Unfortunately, our our Ryzen is just getting absolutely wailed on. He needs to be a lot more careful. Um, Thanatos should not be able to walk into both of them and kill them. They should actually destroy the Thanatos. Like, not even close. But he's 4-1 to one with a Frenzy, which is certainly something. So I have the Anubis is from the right lane. Best of luck tier. Clear this wave. Ryzen's just not here. Not worried about it. Our tier is actually huge, which is awesome. I'm going to start rotating over there to help him. Saving my point here at level 8 so I can get a point in my flop and my ultimate. The speed buff spawn and the blue buff is up, which is huge. I'm just going to kind of stand here and try to get the assist for this. Did I get it? No, I did not. That's all right. I'm trying the blue buff. They can't go do the gold theory, which is great. We need to be taking both their buffs. We can take both of these. I would actually love to take this blue buff right now so I can get enough to go over here. Thanatos is definitely going to be coming over here, so we want to clear this as fast as we can. Kind of get out. We used all of our abilities. Fire creeps up. This is awesome. We're getting a lot of XP off this. And we're down to Tipsy, so go ahead and use my chug. Keep that all nice and good. I can get the tier 2 of my urchin. The tier 2 of your urchin is very effective for just getting your HP up. They're really, really good kill by Loki there. Uh, this tier 2 on urchin, so strong. 30 of each protections, 125 of each health and mana. It's going to give you very, very tanky stats for uh, the price of that item, actually. Anubis is falling behind. Level 9, we got both my flop and my ultimate ranked up. Anubis over here, we can actually fight this, especially if Ryzen uses his abilities. That's Anubis ult, that's Anubis Aegis down. Ryzen missed his ultimate mostly. There we go, he's going to go ahead and get it. I'm trying to body block as much as I can, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, uh, I don't want to use my shell because he's already dead. Oh, he missed, now I can use my shell. Flop him. Oh no. Stunning, trying to body block. Stay behind me, Ryzen. No! Oh my god, he's going to live. Get him, Mercury. Get him, Mercury. Get him, big boy. Hit him in the head. Hit him in the head, Merc. No, Merc. No, Merc, yes. Run, Merc, retreat. There you go, we don't know where anybody is. That was 
crazy. That Thanatos is big. He has Devo gloves. I was like, I'm pretty sure that guy was life stealing. He does. He has Devo gloves, dude. That's nasty. You heard it here, folks. Here first, folks. Thanatos with Devo gloves. It's the new meta. Welcome to the new world of Smite. Chilling back. I don't need to do anything crazy against that guy. Enemies incoming left. That's the Fafnir going over there. Trying to get credit for as much of that as I can. Alright, I can back me my hand there to now. Actually, sub 10 minutes, which is going to be massive for me. Uh, that's going to be really, really awesome for tankiness. They're going to have quite a hard time killing me, especially as I start getting my stacks on as we go into these team fights. Because of Bacchus, I can just go ahead and do the back camps, and I don't even feel bad. So I'm going to rank up my Chug first this game, guys. You have to choose for you what you want to rank up first. Um, some people don't like ranking up Chug because it does increase the mana cost by a lot. 40 to 140 at the end. So it does really, really increase the mana cost. You can start using your Chug later and later and later to get the same effect. But the reason why I rank it up before the Belch is because it gives you more protections. And if you use the protections correctly at the start of a fight, it's basically like an additional height of the urchin. Uh, without the stacks, of course. But like, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of protection at the start of the fight, or you can use it at the start of tanking a gold fury or something. So very, very effective in terms of the protection that's giving you. Not to mention your passive on Bacchus is giving you, what? Percentage reduction, woo! All right, percentage reduction. Guys, 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 guys. Okay, I'm just gonna open it. <laughs> that Fafnir was on his way over, and nobody seemed to wanna finish the objective. Waiting for somebody to use their fearless or something off this guy before I flop. There it is. Got him. We should be able to finish it off. Don't even have to use my shell yet. We should retreat. We should really back up off this. I'm going to come over, help Loki as much as I can, throw down the stun. He'll actually be okay. Chill. We're good. We're going to take damage from that, but not nearly as much as we should. Loki's going to be able to finish him off. His retreat off of that. Oh my god, that's so risky. Screw it! If we're being risky, let's go risky, baby! Oh my god, we did it. Just run! Rack, look at tower. Everybody have Artemis? Yeah, attack mid lane, dude. Nice. Alright. Rank up my one again. Go ahead and give me even more protection from that. And I can start to wait. I'm not in the team fight on using my actual drink until even later now. Just to conserve mana. It doesn't really matter because I'm backing. But the thought process is you don't want to be spamming it because you don't want to abuse your mana. Next up, we're going to be working towards Spirit Robe, guys. Uh, we also want to be finishing our Wing Blade. Finishing our Wing Blade and getting our Spirit Robe are going to be our two main priorities right now. Um, their slows are not really doing anything to me, so I'm not... It's not my biggest priority to get Wing Blade. Normally, you want to finish your Wing Blade right after you finish Urchin. Uh, it's going to normally be a priority. Normally, more teams are going to have slows than this. Normally, I won't be as tanky as this already. But that's going to be very big. But as of right now, I'm going to work into getting Spirit Rope and then going back and doing the Wing Blade. Looking to throw down the Sun. Got two. Flopping. Only got one because of the Fearless. He's going to go ahead and jump, though. I don't have anything up. Waiting the Drunk. Waiting the Drunk. Waiting the Drunk. And... The bug, unfortunate. I wish I could not be stunned for three seconds. Whatever. Go for the kill. Got him drunk. I'm looking at the Hercules. Throwing down the Sun. I can also throw down a Flop, but nobody is with me. I need to back up. Have to use my drink to give me bonus protection. Hercules is going to keep coming for me. I'm going to need help from somebody. And that is going to do. Thank you so much, Ryzen, for the help. I appreciate it. You might actually be able to kill on the Hercules. Yeah, the Hercules chased way too far. So as of right now, I'm level 11. You see I'm very low, but I don't want to back yet because I want level 12. Level 12 is super, super important for support. You get that second team fight active. Ryzen's coming over here to help me with this. They're actually going to surrender. Uh, this is the basic idea, guys, you're looking for with Bacchus. You can see 308. The rest of the build goes Spirit Rope into Mail of Renewal into Mantle of Discord. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something here today about Bacchus and what you should be thinking about in your mind when you're looking in team fights for when you're initiating and for when you're peeling. Hope you learned something today. If you did, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, have a twitching day, y'all. It's the final countdown. Ba -da -ba -boo. Ba -da -ba -ba -boo. Ba -da the final countdown.